Hey, it's Kristen Shaw. It's another show and tell here in Seattle. I'm here with Chris Van from Burns and McDonald. How are you, Chris? I'm good. It's nice to see you. You too. Let's talk about what Burns and McDonald is up to lately. Okay. So first, explain to our viewers what Burns and McDonald does um, in a quick statement, and then we'll go from there. So Burns and McDonald does a broad spectrum of anything and everything design-wise um, across transportation, energy, uh, that all, all that good stuff, as well as construction. We actually do, our, do the prime construction on a couple billion dollars worth of that a year. I run our national aviation practice, so anything and everything that happens at an airport falls under me, and uh, we're involved in all of it. It's a lot. It is a lot. Tell me what it's been like for you in the last two or three years, because this is what's blowing my mind lately, right? Airports have to plan out 10 or 20 years in advance. <laughs> And then something like the pandemic happens, and everything gets thrown up in the air. So how have you guys had to adjust, and what have you seen happening in the Air Force Base? So it's interesting. Uh, you know, you, you go back in time about five or six years, and the airlines were making a lot of money, and the airlines took the passenger experience upon themselves to start uh, and to improve that. And so you saw the airlines investing a lot of their own money into a lot of places particularly on the coasts where they were flying people internationally where all the, you know, the, the dollar, high dollar routes were for them. Uh, so then you fast forward to the pandemic, all the airline money dried up. And so now all of a sudden the project shifted from an airline focus to more of an airport focus. And because the government was helping the airports. But interestingly enough, when you, you know, we saw that uh, airline passenger traffic drop to near zero levels, it really, the, the work at airports did not come to a grinding halt because all it really did is change their focus. You know, they were, I don't want to use the word desperately, but they were uh, eagerly trying to, to lure the passengers back. Trying, you know, everybody, it's safe, everybody needs to come back. So they were doing projects to improve the cleanliness and the sanitation in the, in the terminals, trying to get the passengers back. So all that was work that needed to be done and trying to re-plan on what the future was going to look like. You know, all the projections went out the window all of a sudden. So trying to figure out what the next 20 years, the next even 20 months look like for them was a, was a challenge. Right, right. Uh, so it, the type of work was a very sharp left turn from a lot of airline work that was special for them to now airport work and trying to reimagine how airports functioned. And, and, you know, and I say that because all of a sudden every airport we designed or that existed out there was no longer good. And I say that because you know, you, the whole thing was working on a little bit of space as you put people in the queues to go through TSA, for example. Everybody was lined up right against each other. Well, now all of a sudden, people didn't want to line up right against each other. So right. the space you needed for TSA queuing tripled because now you're spacing the people out four or five people apart. So none of the airports were really prepared for that. How are you going to get the people queued through that space? So all the space planning just, you know, it was almost like it started over and it was just fascinating to go through that process. Yeah, and the airports need firms like Burns McDonald to kind of help them, lead them through these processes and figure out what they're going to need next. Because it's a lot to take in. There's so many factors. And how do you feel like, you can help them the best. So, a firm like ours uh, that, uh, you know, we're, we're nationwide, we've got contracts with airports across the country, and one of the biggest questions we get from airports everywhere is, what's, what are the other guys doing? You know, they're curious about, sure. the old adage, if you've seen one airport, you've seen one airport. So everybody knows their airport, they know how <laughs> theirs works. But I've been hearing that for like two decades now, and right? It's, but it's true. It's so true. Uh, it, and uh, so they're very curious about how everybody else is handling certain things and they're interested in learning the lessons that they learned, what worked, what didn't work, and bringing those lessons back to each individual airport has is, is just been tremendous. Incredible. How do you think airports are going to pivot now that everything's ramping back up again? I think, like you said, during the pandemic, they had some downtime where they could build, right? So now, what are they going to do in the next couple of years? What do you say? Still build. I mean, that, building. that building is gonna that's gonna keep going. It, it's funny, you know, airline passenger traffic is back to about ninety percent of what it was pre-pandemic, and so everybody's like, well, it's still under. It's really not because not what much. what you saw is you go back even three four months ago when traffic was back at 75, 80 percent. True, it's at eighty five percent or eighty percent of what it was, but the time frame was shortened. So you still had the same number of passengers going through at the same peak times. And so you still needed the same projects that they had before the pandemic happened. 
And so everybody was talking about, well, it's slowed down, there's less pastures. That's not true. You don't design for an average day. You average for that peak time period. Right. And those peaks are higher now than they were pre-pandemic. Just because they've shortened their schedule and, you know, of when they fly. And uh, that, that's going to be the biggest challenge we have is, saying, all right, there's less money available coming from the airlines. we got we got the same projects we need or even more projects than we had before. How are we going to get those funded? And, and expediency of the projects is now more important than ever. How can we get them built quicker or for less money, build more for less? All those good things that, that makes us scratch our heads. very challenging concepts. Okay. So... What's your best advice for airports right now, looking into the next two years? Let's keep it tight. <laughs> well, it's funny, the, uh, because the airports uh, all are, are geared toward the airlines, right? And so the airports and the FAA want to sit down and do five-year projections on the CIP plan. Airlines are looking five months in advance. And so <laughs> it's always been a disconnect on how you get the airports and airlines aligned, because the airlines are like, there's no way I can tell you what's going on. I can't tell you what's going on six months from now, much less six years from <laughs> right, now. Right, right. And so it's, I think it's now more than ever, it's gonna take collaboration between the airlines and the airports to sit down and, and realistically look at what's coming and when it's coming and start to do those projections and, and start to figure out how to process passengers through um, even more so than ever before. It's gonna be interesting. It is gonna be fascinating. It's, it's why we love aviation. Thanks so much for taking time with us today. Thank it's you. nice to see you. You too.